Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to the Funky Brain Podcast. My name is Dennis, and this is my funky brain up here. Our guest today, he's a five-time best-selling author, entrepreneur, keynote speaker. But the main reason I was attracted to him, and I think you guys will be too, is his podcast, Faster Than Normal, Internet's number one podcast on ADHD, focusing on the superpowers and gifts of having a faster-than-normal brain, which has helped thousands of people around the world realize that having a neuroatypical brain is actually a gift and not a curse. As everybody knows, like my show is based loosely in addiction recovery and life mastery. And the reason um, that we connected is hopefully to, to help anybody listening who's struggling with like something like ADHD, which is attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, realize that they don't need to be ashamed of it. And there are ways to actually use it to your benefit then have it be a detriment. So tell us uh, like exactly what it is, how it's affected you and how you've used it to your advantage. When I was a kid, ADHD didn't exist. When I was a kid, it was sit down and disrupting the class disease. And it caused me a lot of grief growing up, a lot of trouble. And it wasn't until years and years later that I learned that I had ADHD. You know, when I was always acting out in school, making jokes to get t- people to laugh or, or cracking up or making wise or cracking wise, it wasn't so much that I was trying to get in trouble, but I'd tell a joke, I'd get the immediate feedback from the class of laughter, laugh, oh, look, they liked what I said. What did that do? That boosted my dopamine so I could actually sit down and focus. The irony of getting in trouble because I was doing something that would actually allow me to sit down and pay attention, you know, did not go unnoticed. Um, and so as I was growing up, once I became an adult, I'm like, well, holy shit, I could probably use this to my advantage. You know, why, why, was I, why could I do stuff like start companies and sell them three years later and make a fortune, but, you know, couldn't hold a relationship for more than three months or couldn't remember to take the garbage out for three weeks or whatever the case may be. And I started to realize that, the same things that got me in trouble could actually be very, very beneficial if I learned how to use them properly. Um, I was very fortunate. I never drank in school, never drank in college, never had that moment until I got out of, you know, when I was in my mid twenties and running a PR firm, late twenties, I had clients who wanted to go out, you know, Hey, we're coming to New York, take us out for drinks. Okay. I discovered wine, discovered drinks. I'm like, wow, this is fun. You know? And I discovered that my life essentially runs fast, right? My daughter, because she's from my loins, loves pizza. And so we used to order a pizza when she was like three or four, we'd order a pizza. She'd have one slice. I'd have seven. Um, you know, and normal people would say, well, why don't you just put it in the fridge and have leftover pizza? I'm like, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> leftover pizza. I'm like, I don't understand the words you're saying. You know, if I order a pizza, I'm eating the pizza. And what I realized over time is that I do the exact same thing with alcohol, with whatever the case may be. If there is something um, that I like um, and it's in front of me, I will do it. Right. And that, of course, becomes an issue when it's stuff like tequila. I drink the same, I, I used to drink tequila the same exact way. I wasn't trying to get drunk. It was just in front of me. And I never did stupid shit. I never got arrested. I never got, you know, said anything stupid. Thank God. But I, I just because I wasn't going out to get drunk, but I wouldn't have one drink. I'd have six the same way I drank pizza or ate pizza. And then my problem wasn't so much. You know, I remember I went I went to AA several times and just I wanted to figure out what was going on with me. And. I learned about the concept of high bottoms and low bottoms and that, you know, I didn't fall all the way to the ground. If I, if I was drinking, I had like, oh, well, all of a sudden stupid ideas became a lot less stupid. Like shit, I'd never get like the simple act of having another and staying up later is not something I normally do. Normally I'm asleep by 8.30, right? My kid goes out at eight. I'm up at, I'm asleep at 8.30, but I'm up at like 3.30 to go to the, to work out, to get my dopamine. But now I was like, oh, but yeah, I'll have another drink. Oh, look! cocaine right it's like, this, it's like in what world would i ever say happily oh look cocaine you know so it's like you learn about yourself and so for me it's because i don't have that middle ground i joke i have a t-shirt it's my favorite shirt i when you're adhd you have two speeds i have namaste and i'll cut a bitch and that's it there's, there's i don't there's no middle ground there and so for me it was simply um there's a great movie war games right where where the computer learns um about nuclear war. And the last line of the film is the only winning move is not to play. And so I've just learned not to play, right? And I don't miss it. Um, but, you know, and again, it wasn't that I was doing stupid shit, but it was that I'd go to sleep later. Well, if I went to sleep later, I wouldn't wake up super early to go to the gym. Well, if I didn't go up super early to go to the gym, I wasn't having as great a day already. Oh, I feel like crap, I'm pretty dehydrated. I've already ruined the day. Let's order a pizza. It's 11 o'clock in the morning. Okay, let's eat the whole pizza. Three weeks later, I've gained 20 pounds. I'm miserable. I hit it. What's the point? 
Right. So I just realized that if I want, and it all comes back to ADHD, right? That faster brain. So I just decided if I want to do better and if I want to perform at my best ability, if I want to be a great father to my daughter, you know, I got to do certain things and not do certain things to sort of make that work. And the irony is, is that the shit I do that's beneficial, most people think is insane. Um, I'm a licensed skydiver. I get over 500 jumps, right? Um, I'll go to the drop zone. I'll jump four times in a morning. I'll come home at 2 p.m., pick up my daughter from her mom's at like four. And I'm just like, it's such a great day. Let's go have fun. You know, I'm like, let's go to the playground for six hours. I'm so hyped up on the chemicals from jumping, the dopamine, the serotonin, that I'm like greatest dad in the world, right? Um, I, I board, I, I take flights to write books. I've written five best, uh, uh, five books, four bestsellers, and four of them have been written on airplanes to the point where my last one, I went to Tokyo, flew to Tokyo and back to write a book. I had no other reason to be in Tokyo. I landed, went to the lounge. I wrote chapters one through five on the flight out, landed, went to the lounge, had a coffee, took a shower, got back on the same plane, same seat. Three hours later, wrote chapter six through 10 and landed. And I got it done and it's bestseller. So I win. You know, so it's like, once I stopped caring what other people thought of me, life became a lot easier. And so, yeah, I have those rules, those sort of, I call them the, my undeniable life rules. And they're the things I have to do. I have to exercise every day. Um, my uh, closet, my clothes closet is divided into two sides and they're labeled. And the side on the left says uh, office slash travel and it's t-shirts and jeans. And the side on the right says speaking slash TV and it's button down shirts, jackets and jeans. And that's it. Um, my suits, my vests, my, my sweaters, those are all in my daughter's closet. Because if I had to go into my closet and huh, oh my God, I, that vest, I remember that vest, Laura gave me that vest, I wonder how she's doing, I should look her up. It's 10, 10 you know, three hours later, I'm naked in the living room on Facebook, I haven't left the house. So you put these rules into place that, that, that help. And, you know, are there times that I wish I could just be quote unquote normal? Very infrequently, because I think that my ADHD is responsible for the majority of my success. But every once in a while, yeah, I'm a nice guy and have a drink, have a, go to a bar, have a couple of drinks with some friends, go home. But I know it's not going to end like that. And again, it's not going to end like something stupid, but it's not going to end like that. So, you know, what, what's the, the line from the West Wing where John Spencer, uh, the chief of staff, he says, uh, someone asked him, he's like, you can't have one drink. He goes, the problem is I don't want one drink. I want 10 drinks. He goes, and the person goes, why? Wow, are things really that bad? He's like, no, things are great. Then why do you want 10 drinks? Because I'm an alcoholic, right? right? And that is the greatest fucking line I've ever heard in my life. Aaron Sorkin's a goddamn genius. And, but it's true. You know, uh, we have this image of addicts and alcoholics as these, you know, and, and so did I, you know, as these, as these sort of rundown skid row, lying in the street, people that are easy to recognize. And they're so not. I, when I quit drinking and wrote about it, like a year into my sobriety, I had so many people that emailed me, people that I've worked with in the past who I never would have thought. Like, oh, it's so good to see you're one of us. I'm like, the fuck does that mean? Holy shit, you, <laughs> you know? I, and again, it, it was never, you, you look at me and, you know, well, yeah, but you do Iron Man and you do this and that. I'm like, so? It doesn't matter, right? I mean, think about what an Iron Man is. It, it's three sports. It's a 2.4 mile swim, 112 mile bike ride and a full marathon all within 17 hours, right? If you don't think the training for those three things, the training for that one race is simply substituting one addiction for another, I got news for you, right? But that's fine. I'm happy to do that. You know, my other logic is, you know, why suck at one sport? You can suck at three. It's yeah. perfect. It works so much better. Um, but, you know, the things I do in my, it's, it's, it's about knowing what your brain is, knowing who your body is and knowing how your brain works and then finding things to do that give you that same high, but that aren't actually entirely terrible for you. Yeah. And they're not killing you. And I, I, I say that too. Like I exercise, I, I say I exercise alcoholically too. I totally do that for sure. But when I do that, when I over exercise, it doesn't make me drive my car into things that don't move. And it, it doesn't make me pee my pants and pass out in my clothes. And I love what you talked about, about staying in the middle. You know, it, it's like, we want to avoid the, the highs and the lows because those cause us to keep staying in the highs and the lows. Like when I'm high, I, I want to take something to get me over the top excited 
And then I crash from there. And then I need something else to keep me overexcited. And then I crash. And that's the key. The key is planning it well. Like, so if I do, if I get up super early at 3.30 and do a long run or go skydiving, whatever, I know that once I put my daughter to sleep at eight o'clock, I'm going to be dead. I'm going to be so tired. And it's perfect. I actually look forward to going to sleep because it means I get to wake up and do all this shit all over again. Yeah. That to me is like the most exciting thing. I love being able to go to bed and knowing that when I wake up in the morning, it's going to start all over again. I'm going to enjoy it. It's like, it's like Groundhog Day, but in a good way. So shifting to like a fun topic, tell us something about your favorite experiences using your special ability here. Can you think of something where it really helped you like excel someplace? I started a company called Help a Reporter Out. And, and you know, I came up with the idea on an airplane. I got to the lounge in between flights and wrote the basic idea, sent it to a friend of mine who's a coder. By the time I landed in New York, he had a website for me. I launched it the next day. Two weeks later, it was generating revenue. I sold it three years later for millions. That entirely is because of my ADHD, without question. I mean, normal people don't start doing that shit. They don't start, hey, let's start a company. Okay, it's done. They think about it, they they talk to people. That Who has time for that? Yeah, yeah, I love that. And then you use it, so how did you do in the Ironman triathlon? How, did you do that multiple times, haven't you? I've done two Ironman, but I've done about a couple of dozen half Ironman, I've done 27 marathons. I'm just not very smart. I don't learn from my mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us, so besides like just the ADHD, like what are some other challenges like that you have to face on a regular basis that keep you from, you know, being perfect all the time? I'm constantly battling my weight. You know, people look at me, it's like, you know, you're confused. You, you said you've done an Iron Man. You've actually sat on your couch and watched the movie Iron Man. Well, I didn't know I've really done two Iron Man. It just doesn't look it because I'm always, I'm always striving to lose those last 20 pounds. The, the difference between me at 230 and me at 210 is fucking palpable. Um, so I'm constantly fighting the last 20. Um, I am of the belief that I have, I have massive imposter syndrome. I'm, I'm of the belief that every single day I'm going to wake up. And I'm sure that's going to be the day the New York Times uh, writes this scathing piece about how terrible and stupid I am. And how everything I've gotten, every, 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 everything I've done, and every bit of success I've had has just been blind luck. And then when they don't write it, it's obviously because um, I'm not important enough for the New York Times to cover me. So, yeah, that's every single day. So what are some of the tools then? Not to take, because I love, I love what you're saying there. So when these things come out, so what are some of the tools that you use to, to navigate through those things? Exercise. Uh, a lot of times, you know, you put me on a bike for an hour. And the dopamine inside, the dopamine that gets released from that ride will crush any neuroses I might have. Um, that's huge. I think stopping and understanding that, dude, your, 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 your brain is, is talking shit to you. This is the part where you don't believe it. You got to stop believing it is helpful as well. You know, you got to realize that a lot of it is, 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 your, is almost always um, your brain trying to mess with you. And if you can get through that, it's a lot easier. Yeah. And do you meditate? You know, I don't. Um, I think my meditation comes when I'm on the bike or comes when I'm running or comes on an airplane. Yeah, I think there are multiple ways to meditate. I think a common misconception, and I've talked about this, is that people think you need to be like in a robe up in the Himalayas in a cave for eight months to meditate. Not at all. Not at all. And I love, I use, there's exercise meditation, guided meditation, silent meditation, walking meditation eating meditations it's just something you're doing to um to change your current state so i love exercise meditation i use it as a meditation as well um Definitely. awesome stuff man so um if you can go back to your younger self your 15 year old self what would you tell that guy i actually wouldn't tell him anything um because for me i, I you know it's the butterfly effect anything i do is going to screw up me in the future. I guess if I tell him anything, I tell him to stop worrying about what other people think about you. Because when I, like I said, when I finally realized that I became free. So I'd probably tell him that, spare him a few more years of hell. To close up here, well, what's one thing that people misunderstand about you? I think a lot of, it took many, many years to learn that for a lot of time, I wasn't so much boasting when it sounded like it. It wasn't all about the Peter Shankman show. It was that I felt like if I didn't say anything, no one would know that I was worth anything. Yeah. I think that once I got through that, life became a lot better. Yeah. Great answer. Thank you so much. So if somebody wants to get in touch with Peter Shankman and reach out to you, how would they do that? My entire life is at shankman.com. My email is peter at shankman.com. I'm at peter shankman on all the socials. 
Well, thank you so much, Peter. It was a real pleasure speaking with you. I enjoyed it. Right on, everybody. Well, thanks for listening. Thanks for tuning in to listening to Peter Shankman today and for listening to the Funky Brain in general. Have a great day today, unless you have other plans. And then I'll talk to you soon. Bye for now. So I've been asked recently, why would I need a life coach and how can a coach help me? Well, I spent the last 15 years helping people overcome their challenges and propel themselves forward in life. And I work with people worldwide via Zoom and currently have clients in New Zealand, England, Australia, and of course, scattered throughout the US here. So how come some people seem to be able to think of great ideas and just get them done at a high level and some people just get stuck? Well, we need consistency in our lives to specifically define our goals and create specific action steps to get them done on a daily basis. And then execution is key. We could design all the beautiful plans we want, but without proper execution, most plans live a very short life. And then finally, and the most important piece of the puzzle to unlock all that success afterwards is accountability. All the most successful people in the world have coaches, mentors, and accountability partners. Oprah, Richard Branson, Elon Musk. Nobody reaches high levels of success on their own. In most cases, they have teams of people to run their ideas by. It takes more than just a good idea to reach your goals and dreams. It takes hard work, effort, commitment, and dedication. And of course, somebody to hold your feet to the fire to make sure these things get done at a high level. And that's what I do. I help people reach their goals at a high level. I am a high performance coach. And when I say that, I don't just mean money. I mean, kicking your addictions and mastering your life, improving your relationships, reaching your financial goals, crushing your health and fitness goals. So reach out today for a free session to start radically changing every area of your life. Don't wait till tomorrow or when it seems like the perfect time. Now is the perfect time to start achieving all your goals and dreams and to radically change your life forever. I'll talk to you soon. Have a beautiful day.